Um, today we are joined by uh, John Liddell, who is a senior account manager uh, within TD uh, UK um, and has a great passion for working with our uh, TD pilot um, and our iOS uh, solutions. So um, you'll get lots and lots of good tips and tricks today from, from John. So handing over to John. Um, thank you, John. Um, you take it from here. Thanks, Shona. I think I am a bit guilty of becoming unduly excited about uh, iOS 17 on the TD Pilot. And hopefully some of that comes across to you on this uh, little webinar then. Yeah, so as Shona says, my name's John Little. I work in the uh, UK team as an account manager. So my job is to work with individuals and service providers to help them understand about our uh, products, providing training and also um, sort of installation support and things like that um, with uh, new systems I may have got. So let's see if I can advance these slides. There we go. OK, um, so quick look at the agenda of what we're going to talk about. Um, so we're going to give an introduction to the new features and uh, talk about why they're such huge news. We'll give a little history of the TD pilot here uh, and also what some users have been ask asking for in terms of maybe improvements to the TD pilot or their experience on it. Then we're going to look at the new features. They are assistive access mode, snap to item uh, and auto hide the cursor. Within that, we'll be talking about um, Snap to Item, but also Toby Dynavox's own region-based interaction uh, that we already had in our communication software. We'll be giving uh, live demos, including how to set this up, and looking at the experience of Snap to Item across the iPad OS, but also in third-party AAC and environmental control apps as well. Uh, as this is fairly new, we also need to talk about some of the pros, cons, and considerations around the snap to item function. Then we're going to be talking about the very exciting new personal voice and the live speak app uh, from Apple. And again, uh, looking at the system requirements you have and how to set this up. And then a little summary at the end. So uh, as a key highlight of, um, sorry, the key highlights of iPad OS 17 and what it's bringing to eye tracking, AAC and environmental control. Um, the first one is uh, the ability to create your own banked synthesized voice for free uh, directly on your iPhone or iPad Pro uh, or your MacBook, for example. Um, so if you're a person at risk of losing your voice, you're able to go through the process of recording 150 phrases um, and then generating a synthesized version of you that you will be able to use on uh, communication apps. The snap to item function is a new function for made for iPad eye trackers, such as the TD pilot. And it's all about giving a more refined uh, eye tracking experience when using functions outside of TD talk and TD snap, where a, si a similar thing, uh, function called region based interaction already existed. Um, this is basically something that the operating system is automatically identifying uh, regions such as buttons, keyboard letters, prediction cells, web links, etc., and drawing a box around them and effectively drawing your eyes into that to make it easy to make those selections. Uh, there are some other smaller features I'll go through uh, more quickly. We've got the uh, auto hide um, the cursor mode. I'm just going to hide myself here. Uh, the auto hide the cursor mode. Um, this is a nice function for if you're maybe reading a Kindle book or watching a YouTube video. Previously, when you had the eye tracker turned on, you would have a cursor going on the very area that you were focusing on. And therefore, that could obscure what you're reading or what you're viewing. And now Apple has responded to feedback and put in an auto hide cursor function. We also have this assistive access mode, which is a tool, perhaps those for those with uh, maybe low, lower cognitive uh, abilities who need a more simplified interface to the iPad and perhaps also more simplified uh, versions of some of their favorite apps as well. And then live speech, which is Apple's own very, very simple uh, AAC tool that's built into um, the operating system. It's not something that's going to compete with um, something like TD Talk, for example, but it is definitely something that um, people can use to get themselves using a synthesized voice. 
So we believe that iPad OS 17 is absolutely huge news for the eye tracking arena, but also AAC and environmental control as a whole. Why do we think this? Well, we think it's got the potential to be a real disruptor of current practices um, in use and recommendation around um, AAC and environmental control systems. We really think through snap to item and things like the personal voice, um, more barriers to choice of operating system have been lifted. So in you know many instances uh, for eye tracker users, it has been traditional to go down the route of a Windows based system. I think the choice between Windows and an iPad based system now for eye tracking, AAC or environmental control is a much more even handed choice now. The personal voice, voice banking, um, we think this is going to be great because more people are going to be doing voice banking earlier and there is going to be much greater awareness about the uh, facility really to uh, create a legacy voice if you're at risk of using losing your own. So we can expect to see many new users with progressive conditions arriving at their AAC service, um, maybe an assessment centre, with a personal voice already. Um, we also might see people who are going to look at doing voice do donation for those who've never had a voice that represents them. So maybe it's somebody who never had a voice, but uh, find that the synthesized voices that are available uh, for them don't match maybe their particular accent. And they can perhaps get somebody such as a family member or friend to make a, a donation to go through the process of creating a, a personal voice. So we think uh, voice donation is something that's uh, going to increase through this. And then a big thing, um, and obviously our, our interest is in uh, TD Talk and TD Snap, but... Um, the snap to item function has made more AAC apps uh, accessible for iPad eye tracker users, including third party apps. Um, so there is through all this, uh, the potential for a big rethink about traditional recommendations of Windows based AAC devices, including perhaps um, some challenges from users where uh, assessment centers are um, sticking with the status quo, but users are maybe more familiar with um, iPad-based environments and, you know, maybe have a communication network with their family where everybody's on FaceTime, for example, and they've got an Apple Watch and a, you know, MacBook in the corner. So I want to give a little history uh, and talk about um, the wonderful TD Pilot. I'm holding one up now. I don't know if my um, camera's still on. Um, so the TD Pilot was launched in Nova, November 2021, and it was the first eye tracking solution, Toby Dynavox eye tracking solution for the iPad. It was also the first ever made for iPad certified eye tracker. So made for iPad, it, made for iPad is Apple's own very rigorous uh, quality testing process, uh, where if you're producing a peripheral device or an access method for the iPad, um, they want you to go through very stringent quality control to make sure it's going to meet their requirements in terms of what they expect uh, for a customer experience for uh, iPad related devices. And it also means that made for iPad based eye trackers benefit from new functionality as it's brought out to the operating system, such as um, the snap to item and auto hide features. So that made for iPad certified eye tracker, uh, the little badge down there on the screen is something that you really do want to be looking out for when choosing uh, an eye tracker for your iPad. So the TD Pilot turns the iPad Pro into the perfect eye gaze uh, enabled communication device with great volume, amplified speakers, a protective case, uh, a partner screen. I don't know if you can see it. I'm just holding it up here and I can say that I'm excited and maybe you can see it on the back there. Um, you get fully integrated eye tracker with no loose wires, uh, options for mounting it to wheelchairs or floor stands or table stands, uh, switch sockets should you need these, and uh, access to great AAC software in TD Talk for uh, literate text-based users and TD Snap perhaps for your symbol users, but also uh, literate users as well. Users have always had through the TD Pilot full access to the iPad operating system and a world of apps through Apple's own assistive touch tool. 
Um, and since its launch, the TD Pilot has revolutionized both AAC and environmental control access for many users with progressive acquired or congenital conditions of all ages. On the device are TD Talk and TD Snap, and these are very powerful AAC options for both the text and the symbol users. And these have region-based interaction support, which gives a very uh, refined eye tracking experience when selecting buttons and building messages and selecting uh, prediction cells. I'm gonna go through quite a bit on what region-based interaction is, so you'll learn all about it later. And one of the things, I don't, I don't know if this is global, but um, in the UK, um, the TD Pilot has proved to be a very surprising hit with many environmental control services, considering it doesn't uh, you know, have inf um, radio frequency or infrared transmitters directly in it. When paired with solutions such as Housemade, Control Plus, Control 4, Alexa, Google Assistant, or Apple Home, it's something that the environmental control services are seeing that it can be a real enabling solutions for people who need to control devices around their home. So users have had choice since the TD pilot. However, there have been some things that people have said the TD pilot could be a bit better at. And these have mostly been things that are perhaps outside of our control because we rely on, outside of a the AAC software, we rely on Apple's own assistive touch tool to give you the best experience uh, when op uh, operating third-party apps or the iPad OS environment. So... Region-based interaction support until iOS 17 was only available in TD Talk and TD Snap. Accessing features in the iOS environment and other apps was all, was definitely possible, but it, it was reliant on Apple's assistive touch, and that works a little bit like a, controlling a mouse pointer on the screen. And for some people, there, there are plenty of people who are getting on perfectly well without uh, snap to item and just using this kind of mouse cursor mode. But for some people with slightly poor eye tracking accuracy, it can be less forgiving and, and make it a challenge to hit smaller targets. Uh, that region based interaction support wasn't available in any third party AAC or environmental control apps either. Um, Another slight limitation, and I don't know if this is a, a UK only issue, but whilst TD Talk supports voice banking solutions, including Model Talker, The Voice Keeper, and Acapella's My Own Voice, uh, um, Speak Unique support was not yet available. And so, Speak Unique is a voice banking solution that's very popular in the UK, and it's a, a common request for us. The great thing is that since iPad OS 17, um, all of these bots have been addressed. So let's run through some of them now. The first thing I'm going to talk about, and this is just a short session, is uh, the assistive access mode. So to quote Apple, assistive access is a distinctive iOS experience that makes it easier for people with cognitive difficult, uh, disabilities to use their device independently. Essential apps and experiences have been optimized for assistive access. Items on screen are bigger, features are more focused, and it's easier to navigate and understand what actions are possible. Now, the first caveat I would give on this is um, it presents that nice large button interface that you can see on the right, but um, assistive access is not for eye tracker users. It's for uh, predominantly for people who are using direct access. If you want to use it, the way you set this up is you go to your settings cog on the iPad, you go into the accessibility menu, Scroll down until you get to assistive access. This will bring a screen up like this, where you're able to choose uh, which apps you want to have on. Sorry, I'm just gonna hide my um, taskbar so you can see that. One second, automatically hide the taskbar. I realize some of the content's gone off the screen. Um, you get the choice to manage apps, and this is where you decide what apps you want to have available to the, to the user. Now, there are uh, Apple's own apps, which are, there's a selection of them, such as messaging, photos, camera, making calls, which are optimized for use within um, assistive access mode. And that means that they have limited functionality and nice big buttons. You can, however, 
add any other apps of your choice. So you'll see in that list, I've added uh, TD Snap, which is our communication software, and Housemate, which is an environmental control app. Uh, they would be non-optimized apps. You can decide how it's laid out, whether your content uh, is laid out in a grid or rows. Um, and then when you're ready, you click on Start Assistive Access. It's going to ask you to define a passcode for assistive access. And once you've done that, you're going to get an experience very much like that. So um, I'll just turn this on as well. So um, assuming my screen is available, that's my um, speech case mini setup with assistive, um, assistive access mode on there. And you'll see that there are just six apps on there. And if I click on them, they're very, very simplified. So here's a camera app. And the only choices you get are take photo and back. When you're running a non-optimized app, such as um, the Housemate app that I mentioned, but also uh, TD Snap, you'll see that it runs perfectly well, but it's in a smaller window because it needs room to include the back button. So I would suggest that perhaps running um, TD Snap for a, you know somebody who's working with 30 buttons on a page, those might go a little bit too small for that user, but perhaps somebody who needs assistive access is likely to be someone who's using uh, TD Snap with fewer buttons on the screen. So assistive access is a great way of simplifying iPad access for those with cognitive needs whilst maintaining the core functions they're likely to use. To exit assistive access mode, you need to triple press the iPad top button, uh, press it three times, and then choose uh, exit assistive access. Again, you'll be asked to type your passcode. There are a couple of considerations. As I mentioned before, it doesn't work in with eye tracking. The apps run in a smaller window to allow access to the back button. And it does take a while, I'd say, up to 30 seconds to switch between, uh, well, to turn this mode on and off. OK, so that was the assistive access mode. I want to talk now um, about um, one of the major features and also a nice bonus feature in Auto to Hide. So that's Snap to Item and Auto Hide, which are two new features exclusively for made for iPad eye trackers, such as the TD Pilot, that I think are going to revolutionize access to the iPad OS environment, as well as third party AAC and environmental control apps. Turning it on, if you want to find it on your device, such as a TD Pilot, is you go to the settings cog, you find the accessibility menu, you look for touch, and in there you'll find assistive touch. Go into assistive touch and scroll down until you find devices. Now, this is uh, going to take you to a new menu, which will only appear if you have a made for iPad certified eye tracker. And you'll see that the Toby Dynavox pilot there is listed by name. When we go to that page, you'll see that there are some exclusive functionality for the Toby Dynavox uh, pilot or made for eye tra uh, iPad eye trackers. And the two that we're most interested in are snap to item and the auto hide function. So I'm going to give a, a live demo, and, and I say it's a live demo. It's actually a pre-recorded demo. Um, I did try this once before, and uh, demonstrating the eye tracking over the Zoom meeting didn't work. So it will be a pre-recorded uh, video that I'm going to run. But before I do that, I'll just talk about what I'm going to cover. So we're going to look at what the situation was like before iPad OS 17. Part of that will be understanding Toby Dynavox's own region-based interaction support in TD Talk and TD Snap, and then looking at how the eye tracking was in the iPad OS environment before the upgrade. We'll also look at how you used to work in third-party AAC and environmental control apps before the upgrade. Then we'll turn on Snap to Item in iPad OS 17 and look at how this has improved things, both across the iOS environment but also in third party EC and AAC apps. So we're going to talk in the live demo about region based interaction, but I just want to kind of explain what it is and then we'll go to a demo of it. So this is 
I'm not going to call it our equivalent of snap to item because it's much better than snap to item. But this is our tool to give you a refined eye tracking experience in TD Talk and TD Snap. And it's always been there. The way it works is by recognizing the borders of the uh, the buttons. Uh, and those buttons could be uh, your prediction cells, your general symbol buttons or your keyboard uh, buttons. Uh, and it makes selection of these much, much easier. Effectively, it, it's it's recognizing that you, even if your eyes are wobbling within those buttons or even going out of the borders of the buttons, it recognizes the button that you're intending to get and draws the focus of your dwell into that. So it reduces effort and stress when you're using an eye tracker and it's much more forgiving and uh, gives you greater tolerance if your accuracy is not so good. So we're going to give a live demo of, of that and uh, I'll be quiet for a moment because you're going to get a pre-recorded version of me speaking as well. You'll see from this video what looks like a very smooth I eye tracking experience. Want lunch. I want lunch. However, if I show you the live gaze feedback, you'll see what's actually going on when I make those selections and how much work the software is doing to eliminate um, what would be accidental want. selections. You can see from the gaze feedback that my gaze is actually falling outside the boundaries of the buttons dinner. on numerous occasions. I want dinner. Let me give an exaggerated example of how this is really working in the background with uh, really large buttons and an absurdly long dwell time. You'll see that despite my gaze traveling all around the button, um, the system still Drink. recognizes my intentions and I'm able to complete a Drink. three second dwell. The other benefit of region interaction is that uh, if Dinner. my eyes actually do venture out of the borders of the button into an adjacent button, um, the clock doesn't reset. It just rewinds by a small amount and allows Drink. me to pick up from pretty much where I left off. Region interaction plus other tools such as delay after page change and uh, look away before reselect really led to a smooth eye tracking experience in the communication apps from Toby Dynabox. However, outside of Drink. these apps and in the iOS environment or in third party apps, your experience was a little bit different. So this is me in the iOS environment and you can see I'm effectively controlling a mouse cursor. So it doesn't depend on a degree of accuracy. As I'm typing, I'm able to hit the buttons I'm looking for, but as you can see, I'm not banging the center of them. So if I had any further accuracy issues, it might be that I wasn't able to hit the targets I was going for. I've got access to nice features such as continuous scroll. And whilst I'm able to hit small targets here, in some instances, these can be tricky. Let's have a look at the way things used to work in third party EC and AAC apps. So in Housemate, for example, you see I'm controlling a cursor and I've got nice big buttons. So I am able to activate the selections, but I'm not being drawn into the buttons like I would be in the TD AAC apps. Let's look at the experience in Grid for iPad before iOS 17 and Snap to Item. And so you see again, I'm using a mouse cursor uh, to make those selections and I am able to hit the buttons here, but I'm not being drawn into the center of them. Um, and I think uh, my calibration may be off, but over to the side of the screen, I am having a little bit of difficulty making uh, a selection of the place that I want to go. I'm actually trying to get shop here, uh, but struggling to get there. I'm not being drawn into it. If we look at the position with predictable before iOS 17, you'll see it's a very similar thing. Um, again, using a mouse cursor, not being drawn into the buttons, having a bit of a problem there, getting the H, but get there eventually. Um, I think we can see from this that it's always been possible to use third party uh, communication apps with the TD Pilot, but I would say it's not been ideal. 
hopefully when we turn on the snap to item feature you'll really see what i would consider to be a profound difference which is going to make it much easier to say yes i could use these apps so now i've turned on apple's snap to item function and i hope you can see through these next few demos just what an incredible difference this makes to eye tracking accessibility both in the ipad operating system but also uh, across a range of third-party environmental control and AAC apps. Starting with a bit of web browsing, I've done some shopping on Amazon and now I'm off to the BBC website. You'll see I'm getting a box around uh, each of the letters in a colour of my choosing. This is much, much easier to type. I'm also getting that same box around each of the web links and pictures so I can make selections easy. Even when I go to the assistive touch menu, you can see that all of the selections there also have that snap to item box around them. I've been extremely impressed by some of the region identification that uh, the snap to item function has been able to do. In this instance, for example, it's a chess app that's actually been designed for an iPhone, um, but the snap to item feature has done an incredible job of uh, identifying the regions and made the game so easy to play. Here I am controlling my environment with the Alexa app, turning lights on, and I can see that the region identification from snap to item is really, really good. So making selections is incredibly easy. Now I'm on FaceTime, again, using snap to item. You can see I'm able to independently initiate a call with my colleague, Joe, and then hang up when we're finished. Hey, Joe, how are you? Hey, John. Yeah, it's good yeah, to see right. you. Right. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can hang up with these regions. Oh. When reading an ebook or watching a video, the cursor could be a bit of a distraction. So the new iOS 17 auto hide feature will hide the cursor. In this instance, I put it as a hot corner, so I'm activating it now. And that means that when I'm watching the video on Netflix here, I haven't got a cursor that's going to distract my view. Looking again at the third party environmental control and AAC apps, let's start with Housemaid. You'll see that I have the snap to item function successfully identifying all the regions within Housemaid, and this makes activating buttons much easier. It's a very similar story with Grid for iPad. Here you can see the region identification from snap to item is working very well indeed. This is making building the same sentence as I did earlier much, much easier. So if there's a particular voice, symbol set or vocabulary that I need to use in Grid for iPad, I'm able to use it on the TD Pilot. If I've previously banked my voice with Speak Unique and I want to use their AAC app, you can see here that I can interact with all of the buttons on the screen and type on the keyboard with snap to item support and find accessing this software much, much easier than it previously would have been. Hello. It's very much the same picture if you're a predictable user. Here, once again, snap to item has done a fabulous job at identifying all the buttons all of the keyboard letters and all of the prediction cells to make accessing this software much easier. Hopefully you've been able to see that the difference between iOS 16 eye tracking and iOS 17 eye tracking is like night and day. How are you today? Okay, you've got the real me back now. Um, so hopefully you could see the, the um, the power that snap to item has brought and also um yeah you can see that it's going to give much improved eye tracking um access across the ipad operating system improved access to a wealth of apps not just communication and uh, environmental control apps but definitely including some of those third-party environmental control and aac apps
Now, obviously, we want you to be using uh, TD Talk and TD Snap because they already have uh, Toby Dynavox's region-based interaction built in, uh, and that is more powerful than Snap to Item. And I'll talk about that in a, uh, a moment. However, we do recognize that sometimes the AAC app choice is determined um, by a need for a particular vocabulary system, a symbol set, even a language that's not supported in TD Snap or TD Talk, um, or a bank voice system that might not be available in our AAC apps. So now users have got choice, both of the device and the operating system they use, iOS or Windows, but also of the environmental control and AAC apps that they choose. Now, I just want to uh, talk a little bit about the power of Hot Corners. So Hot Corners give you the ability to assign your favorite functionality to um, a corner of the screen. So it's easier to do certain things or make certain changes in just one second. So in this instance, I've actually set up um, Hot Corners, uh, which you find under the Assistive Touch menu under Hot Corners. Uh, I've set them up for two functions, one to turn off Snap to Item or turn it on, and also to flick between um, the um, auto hide on and off. So in this instance, I would go to Hot Corners, And turn it on or off. We should say that the regions identified by snap to item are not always perfect and you might go find yourself going on certain apps or certain websites where it's not made the best job. However, it's entirely possible to switch in a second between the mouse cursor mode and the snap to item mode and back again. So one of the things we suggest is setting up that action to switch toggle modes uh, as a hot corner action. So hopefully you saw in that little video um, that there was an instance where the um, snap to item functionality hadn't worked so well. So I'd set up um, snap to item toggle in the top left hand corner and I was able to, quick it, to quickly turn it off and go back to the mouse cursor mode. Now we've talked about uh, region based interaction and uh, in our own software and snap to item in the iOS environment. It's probably just worth talking about some of the differences between those. So region-based interaction is only available in TD Talk and TD Snap, whereas Snap to Item is available across a wide range of AAC apps. The benefit of region-based interaction in terms of dwell time is that concept of dwell time being cumulative. You know, on the example I gave where we had really big buttons and a long dwell time, and I was demonstrating that if your eyes flicked off the button uh, off the button and back again for a millisecond or so, uh, the clock hadn't gone back to zero. The dwell time's cumulative, so it adds up how long you've been on that button. Um, when you're using snap to item, it doesn't benefit from that function. So if your eyes do move away from a button and back, the clock will effectively have gone back to uh, zero again. Another benefit of region-based interaction is we do have the capability of setting different dwell times for different targets. So it might be that you uh, have different dwell times between general buttons or keyboard letters or prediction cells, uh, whereas on um, Snap to Item, the dwell time is the same across the board. The reason you might want those different dwell times, let's, for example, imagine you're really familiar with the letters on your keyboard and you set half a second dwell time for the keyboard, but when you're using prediction, if it had the same dwell time, you might not get the time you needed to read the uh, prediction cells without them actually selecting. So it's quite nice to have that functionality of having different dwell times for different button types. There are also functionality in our own software with region-based interaction to say things like delay after page change or look away um, before reselecting and that means that you're less likely to do an accidental uh, selection of a button just sorry that's my dog uh just just because sorry one second
Sorry, it was the Amazon guy. My dog was going ballistic. Um, yeah, so delay after page change is a function that allows um, you to not immediately select a button after you make a page change and look away from before reselect means that if you keep your uh, your eyes focused on the same button, it won't automatically keep doing double hits. Um, there are no such options as yet in Snap to Item on third party AAC uh, tools. Um, other features, um, visually, you get more dwell indicator options in um, things like TD Snap, different colors, clock, shrinking circle, cell highlighting, whereas the dwell indicator on Snap to Item is limited to a color change, border heightening, and a slightly darkening cell fill the longer you're looking at a button. Another slight risk for certain users is with region-based interaction, when you go into the communication software, you get the option to, well, basically the assistive touch circle to call up the assistive touch menu is hidden and you have to go to a special me uh, menu to access it again. Whereas the assistive touch menu in third party AAC app apps will always be on top of the AAC app. So there's a risk of accidentally looking at it when you don't want to, or if you want to control someone's access to uh, the iOS environment, it might be that they can get there and you hadn't wanted them to get there. Um, so we could effectively lock users into the AAC app, uh, but it's harder um, for uh, third party apps. Now, our regions for uh, region based interaction in TD Snap and TD Talk are hard coded into the software. Um, but on Snap to Item, you saw in that uh, the second, the web based chess game, there are possibilities of glitches with regions. Um, we could also control with region-based interaction which menus and settings are accessible to the user. Uh, but with Snap to Item, it is possible that users may get access to items intended just for the communication partner. Um, a sort of win for Snap to Item is that Gaze and Switch is only available in TD Snap and not TD Talk. Uh, but with Snap to Item, you are able to use Gaze and Switch as your selection instead of Dwell across uh, all, all your apps. So in summary, with regard to Snap to Item, it really is a huge enabler. And I can't say uh, you know how enthusiastic I am about it, but there are some caveats. Um, the first one is what we've just talked about. Snap to item is similar, but not as powerful as TD's own region-based interaction for those reasons we were just talking about. Um, the other thing just to be aware of, snap to item in third-party AAC apps has not been thoroughly tested, so there may be some anomalies. For example, I was able to, in grid three, if I looked at the sentence bar, it would perform a click and then put the text cursor in the middle of the, sen um, the, the message window, so it could end up moving my uh, cursor to a different place. I was able to counter that but make my, by making that button non-selectable, uh, the message window non-selectable, but there are things Things like that you might need to look out for. And then another big thing is that you may miss out on features of the device you're using, the uh, TD Pilot, for example, such as the uh, partner screen on the back if you're using third-party AAC solutions. Nevertheless, all in all, Snap to Item and Auto Hide are huge. They're hu really, really huge news for eye tracking access across the environment and in third-party apps. Right, we're going to uh, just change the topic now. We're going to go over to another new feature. Uh, this is live speech. So this is Apple's own uh, very simple um, communication app for communicating um, out, either out through the speakers uh, or um, communicating, uh, um, I think, over things like FaceTime as well. Um, I, I think it doesn't work with the Teams, but it does work with Zoom, I think the testing has found. Um, a weird anomaly with this is that it doesn't work with Snap to Item. I won't do a live demo of it just yet because I'll do it when I talk about the personal voice, but I'll tell you all about how to set this up. So again, for activating live speech, you go to the settings cog, accessibility, then you'll find, scroll down till you get to the speech section, and you can go to live speech. From here, turn it on. And you also have the capability of adding your favorite phrases um, and choosing the voice that you want to use. 
So here are some examples of uh, favorite phrases I added to my uh, live speech, uh, and I can call them up when I'm running live speech without having to uh, type them. Control for some reason. One second. Oh, um, yeah, if you're adding a phrase, you click on that plus button up in the top corner of the, um, the phrases editing tool. So when you're using live speech, you can use a system voice such as Daniel, for example, or if you've created a, an iOS personal voice, you can use that. You launch personal vo uh, live speech by triple pressing the iPad top button. You can also add it to the assistive touch menu if you're using assistive touch, perhaps as an eye gaze user. It's simply a case of typing your phrase and pressing enter to speak it. You can also call up your favorite phrases that we added earlier by clicking on that kind of bookmark symbol there. That will call up your fa favorite phrases and you're able to select them there. There are some limitations. It works with eye tracking, but it doesn't work with snap to item. That's pe really peculiar, but I kind of imagine that Apple will solve that pretty soon. Um, another problem I found is that uh, pronunciation exceptions that you add elsewhere in the spoken content don't seem to be applied to your uh, speech that you speak with um, live speech. So if there is a, a word or a um, like a, somebody's name that's being pronounced a bit strangely, I haven't found a way of making it pronounce it correctly. Another limitation is that it, it clears the spoken text immediately after speaking. Um, and that's kind of a bit annoying in case, um, you know, you've said something and um, someone didn't hear you properly. Uh, I can see on the screen that there is a, an undo button. So maybe that brings it back, though. OK, I'll show live speech in a bit, uh, but I'll combine that with personal voice. So personal voice is another piece of uh, a huge addition to the iOS 17 environment alongside, I would say, snap to item. And what it is, it's your free voice banking tool available for iPad Pro, iPad Air, iPhone and also um, MacBooks, some MacBooks as well. Um, this is the, the requirement. So you do need to be running either iOS 17, iPad OS 17, or Mac OS Sonoma, I think that's pronounced, or later. Uh, it's not every single device. You'll see that the standard iPad isn't listed there. It needs to be iPhone 12 or later, iPad Air, fifth generation or later, iPad Pro 11 inch, third generation or later, iPad Pro 12.9 inch, fifth generation or later, or Mac with an Apple Silicon chip uh, rather than an Intel processor. It's also essential that you have a method of locking your device, either with Face ID, Touch ID, a device passcode or password. That's a prerequisite requirement of creating a personal voice. The process involves recording 150 phrases. Um, I use the iPad's own mic rather than because uh, I, I did it on my TD Pilot. Uh, I found, found I had better results uh, by actually not using the TD Pilot and using the, the microphone directly in the iPad. Um, an important thing, I think it's to do with security. The voice generation is done on your device. It's not that it's going off to the cloud for creation. Um, and it does take a while from when you finish reading the 150 phrases to uh, when the voice is ready. I don't know the exact time. I finished mine at five o'clock in the evening. And when I was checking at various points in the night, it was, uh, you know, up to 30 percent when I went to bed. But it was ready the following morning. This is really, really important. And it's easy to miss this. But your iPad must be plugged in and on charge and locked. You can't be using the iPad during the voice generation process. Um, it does, if you if you do use the iPad, it's not the end of the world. It just pauses the, pra the process. But if you want to have your voice created quickly, you do have to have the device locked and plugged in and on charge. How you get started with this, like all the others, you go to the settings cog and then accessibility. You'll find it under the speech section 
under personal voice. I've already got one, but you click on create a personal voice. And then click on continue. It's telling you about how to record, uh, taking your time, finding a quiet, quiet place and speaking naturally. You give your voice a name. And now it's going to do a sound quality check. So it wants to check that you're not in an environment with lots of background noise. So if you click on the record button, you read the phrase it suggest, um, suggests, and then it tells you if you're ready to go, if it's happy, it will tell you you've got low background noise. And then you can click on continue to continue the process. You'll then be required to read those 150 phrases, pressing record each time. If you want to pause the process at any point, you can click done. And then at a later date, you can come back and click continue recording. So if you feel that recording 150 phrases in one go would be too much for you, don't worry about that. It will just con uh, con continue from where you left off if you press done to cancel out of it and then go back to the same place and choose continue recording. You also have an option um, to export your recordings that you've done to build voices with other systems. And the particular example is Acapella's My Own Voice 4, where the recording you've made, um, and I know a nice way of doing that is having a headset on for that, but um, you'll see there is an option to export your voice recordings. And then there's an equivalent option on the My Own Voice webpage where you can import your Apple voice recordings for the creation of your My Own Voice 4. Now, I want to talk a little bit about my experience. Um, the phrases that I was given were very American in topic. So it was talking about, you know, the history of people being um, getting into the House of Representatives or con Congress and things like that. I did find that the language was fairly complex. So I'm not sure how um, people with, uh, you know, lower level readers might cope with that or younger children. Um, there did seem to be a huge emphasis on years and dates in mine. Um, but I've talked to other people who've gone through this process and talked about my script. And, and that's the script I described to them doesn't necessarily match up. So it, it, I'm not sure if it just does a random script. One thing I did find a little bit frustrating is sometimes the system would advance to the next phrase before I'd finished speaking it, or if I just took a breath halfway through the sentence or something, and it meant that I'd have to re-record that uh, phrase. As I mentioned, uh, you have to make sure that your iPad is locked and charging. It's easy to, to miss that and then come back to it and realize you're on no 0% uh, of the voice development. However, as I mentioned before, um, if you want need to use your iPad, the process will pause. Um, it won't end. So if you're on 30% and then you use your iPad, all it will do is it just pause on 30%. Uh, you can use your device freely and then it will carry on developing your voice when you lock it again and ensure it's plugged in and on charge. So my results, to be honest, I would say they weren't bad. I, I was happy. I'm from the north of England um, and um, I have different vowel sounds to other parts of England. So uh, rather than saying glass, I would say glass, for example, um, and I wouldn't have a bath. I'd have a bath. Um, and it's important to me in terms of my personal identity that uh, a system's going to get things like, like that right. So I was really pleased that it, it did actually get those right. So what we're going to do is just listen to my voice and uh, I'll play that back and you'll see live. I'm playing it in live speak. So you'll see that in operation um, and the video will play. But uh, I triple click on the home button to bring up live speak and then I paste the text in and then just press enter. The student at the University of Cambridge says his success is down to the four years he spent at a pupil referral unit, Pro. George Baldock left mainstream education in Milton Keynes at the age of 11 due to anxiety and depression. 
The 18-year-old has just started a history and politics degree at Trinity College. Here, in his own words, he talks about his unusual journey to the prestigious institution. I could not cope in a normal classroom. So, I know you've listened to me for the best part of an hour now, so you, you kind of know what I sound like. Um, it's it, You're always picky when it's your own voice, because it, it, it doesn't sound exactly like me. But there's enough in there that is reminiscent of me um, that I kind of I kind of quite like it. So, um, yeah, I'm pleased with it. Um, just going to go through some of the considerations around it. Um, the key thing, and this might be, I, I recognise this as an international webinar, so this might be um, uh, a very disappointing thing. It's only available in US English only. Um, so there are no other languages available as yet. I don't know about uh, Apple's plans to broaden this. Uh, I imagine they might do, but I'm, I've no no knowledge of that. It's it's currently US English. As an English speaker, though, I was quite pleased that even though the sort of base model was US English, um, it didn't um, effectively turn me into uh, an American speaker, if you know what I mean. Another consideration is that it doesn't require the use of an external mic. And this, I think, has the potential to be a bad thing in that um, when you're using a, an external microphone, such as a headset mic, then you're going to get a higher quality um, recording than if you've just got your iPhone or iPad on the table. Um, I think one of the major things as well is that if you're sitting in a chair and you've got your your iPhone on the table, then you know you'll change position as you you know want to change your your uh, comfort. Now, if you've got a headset mic, then the quality is always going to be the same, and the distance from the microphone is always going to be the same. But you're going to change position if you're just recording directly on your iPhone and uh, or iPad. However, we do think it's going to raise awareness of voice banking greatly. Uh, and many more people are going to be able to do this sooner than before. I talked earlier about how I think voice don donation might be more common. If you think about maybe a, a child from a particular region um, who uh, finds that the, the voices available and don't sound like them, it could be that. Uh, for free, they're able to get somebody to do a recording um, um, from somebody in their locale. One of the downsides, though, is that if you create a personal voice, it's going to be locked into Apple or the iOS environment. Um, it does mean that this could have an impact on device recommendations. Um, you know, if somebody comes to a service and they've already created a personal voice, um, and then they've lost the opportunity. Maybe things have progressed and they've lost their voice or the quality of their voice for creating a Windows compatible voice. It might be that that then limits um, them to specific device choices, such as you know Apple based, uh, sorry iPad based uh, eye tracking solutions, for example. We also have to consider um, the benefits or the drawbacks of uh, a a commercial voice system or a personal voice, uh, an Apple's personal voice system. So as I've mentioned, personal voice from Apple is uh, US English only. Um, there's also, I'm not sure, the one thing I've not done any testing on, and I don't know the answer to this, is how it would work um, if if it was used to generate a child's voice. So one of the things I do know is that the script that I was given was definitely not a child's script. Um, and I would have thought that some younger users would find that um, difficult to use. Obviously, the commercial solutions, their benefit is hugely that um, they're going to support multiple languages, not U US English, and some of them even support different regions within countries. We talked about the importance of using an external mic, and that's going to have a big impact on quality. And the um, commercial options, such as my own voice, are fairly insistent about using that external mount, uh, mic to give you that uh, better quality. One of the nice things, if I think about uh, my own voice four from a cappella, that works really nicely uh, with message banking. So when you're using the the script, you can actually add your own phrases into the creation of your banked voice um, of the things that you say, very common that you want to 
get across with the emotion and intent that you need to express phrases like that. So telling your partner that you love them or your children that you're proud of them or calling the dog and bring it, giving them a treat, for example, um, a sort of a bass synthesized voice, even if it is your synthesized voice, doesn't get that em emotion and expression across. Now, what you can do is add those phrases during the creation of your acapella, My Own Voice, and it will actually, when it encounters those on your communication system, is use the actual high quality with an expression recording um, when you're using those. The other benefit of the commercial solutions, they're obviously cross-platform. They, they're not going to lim limit you to be being on an iPad only. And then, of course, a huge one is being able to get support from a pro the provider. So the, the supplier of your commercial system, such as Acapella, for example, are going to be responsive to, to your need for support with the process or if the, the voice that was generated you know, wasn't to exactly as you, you'd hoped and if there's tweaks that can be made or an opportunity to do it again, for example, Apple aren't going to entertain those kind of conversations with you. Um, you also get uh, through the commercial solutions, if I think of Acapella as my own voice, you get great integration with our AAC apps. For example, uh, the phrases that come as default within uh, TD Talk, they're included in the process of uh, creating your my own voice. And then the big thing is, is that quality question. So um, the the thing I would say is a lot of these voice providers, uh, Acapella, for example, give you the opportunity to uh, create your vo voice and have a three month trial of it. So it's always worth going through that process and seeing what comes out as the voice that sounds most like you. Because I think having personal identity in your AAC solution, it, it, the, the value of that can't be understated. So, um just coming back to my initial slide, I'm not going to read all, all through this, just to re-emphasize that iPad OS 17 is absolutely huge news. The the impact of snap to item and personal voice is going to make people have so much more choice. Um, being able to use a communication system that uh, meets their needs with the voice that sounds like them, um, having access to... Um, you know, a refined eye tracking experience when you're outside of your communication system and you're doing web browsing, et cetera, is just really such a huge benefit. So um, we really think it's time to look again at the incredible made for iPad TD Pilot. So that's everything from me.